friends uh, so something i would like to extend from here is on the surveillance uh, which is taking place uh, internationally in a major way uh, the gap between the state and the people are increasing in a major way uh, there's so much of resources which is being spent on surveillance you know to watch the people whether they descend how they are moving and all that and it's used with people's money and that is the uh, crux of it when gandhi was uh, 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 asked after uh, the uh, independence by a journalist what is your concept of indian state and he said uh, where minimum army is possible a state where the minimum army is possible that was the concept of indian state and today in india you have the second largest army in the world who is paying for it people are paying for it and what are they doing they are uh, 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 suppressing people in manipur northeast nagaland kashmir and uh, they went to sri lanka also no business you know ipkf then uh, killed a lot of people and uh, uh, uh in all these places so much of uh, uh, uh sexual uh, harassment of women has also taken place so now the point is that people are paying for it why should people pay for such a big uh, uh, mess uh, for defense as well as surveillance is a question that we all have to ask these questions should have been asked 40 50 60 years back right from 1958 when armed forces special powers act has been uh, Uh, introduced in this country, and when Armed Forces Special Powers Act was introduced in uh, uh, Manipur, there was only one insurgent group. The idea was to crush the insurgent group. But after it was introduced, there are over 30 or 40 uh, uh, insurgent groups in Manipur. So it has only increased the situation. And today, for several years, uh, Iran Shamla is on a fast. uh against the harassment of uh, so indian state is uh, on a war with indian people that we are uh, we must understand the whole uh, dynamics of this you know and we must uh, look into why we must pay for it we must not pay for it so this is the uh, this is the same thing which is happening with fabricated also indian people are paying for the surveillance indian people are paying for thousands of people innocent people in in jails uh with a lot of draconian laws uh like uh, europa sedition law the sedition law you have gandhi and nehru was also kind of uh, been uh, they, they said they should be removed but still not been removed in chamal nadu in kurungulam and under sedition laws there are something 6000 people yeah sp uday kumar is uh, has got around 200 uh, uh, odd cases all false cases and these uh, false cases fabricated cases are going on mainly on the muslims dalits adivasis and people's movements as far as i understand and a uh, lot of draconian laws also uh, which can justify it you can put anybody in jail forever without meeting a judge you know so abdul nasir madni for 9 and a half years has been in kambatur jail and after 9 and a half years judge says you are innocent now who is going to pay for his 9 uh, and a half years of su- suffering and he's been branded as a terrorist there was no there was no uh, proof at all it is all cooked up story it is a lecture uh, is worse than a uh, uh, worse than a ordinary third rate commercial film story what the intelligence uh, had cooked up what the police had cooked up what the sang parivar has cooked, cooked up and all the political parties and the media without looking into the uh, uh, reality they never investigated they believed the story and started all kinds of uh, nonsense on this and after that he came as a hero all political parties wanted his uh, to share his platform again uh, he was uh, taken again as a part of Bang- bangalore blast and i'm i'm focusing on the bangalore blast uh, how how uh, my problem is that that uh, not that these people are uh, fabricated my problem is that uh, these fabricated cases are stupidly fabricated If you look at this, the thousands of people who have fabricated cases, ordinary Muslim boys who have been there in Gujarat, we had Pota, uh, we had Tada, we had Misa during emergency. All these draconian laws. Misa was removed because of uh, human rights activists. Then Tada came, Pota came, 
All those removed because of the thing, and then UAPA came. Pota was removed, but even today, there are several Muslim boys who were in Pota in jail. The law is removed. Why are they in jail? So over 100 people are in jail for no reason. They are not meeting the judge. Abdul Nasir Madani is a, is a typical example. Around four, uh, four years he has been spending time. Uh, he's a spiritual leader. The only thing is that he's not an ordinary spiritual leader. He, uh, ha uh, he resisted against the, uh, uh, put his dissent against the Babri Masjid demolition and then, and then his trouble began. began. And then uh, he also supported Dalit movements. The, he supported the uh, Adivasi struggles. He supported Kurungalam struggle and he supported Postco struggle, everything. Ordinary people. So he, for the first time in the history of Kerala, he also uh, uh, made a, a statement that power to the Avarnas and the uh, uh, marginalized. So nobody has said that uh, before. There are people who have talked about Dalit issues, but not nobody has talked about power to the Avarnas. Whether it be Srinagaru, Ayangali, all these historical people never have said that. You know. uh, Abdul Nathan Madani is the first person to speak that. In the last 30 years of history of Kerala, I don't see anybody who is so powerfully powerful orator in the left parties or uh, right parties. You can see that in this film. Uh, uh, I focused on Madani as symbol and with touch, some touch up of other, other people also. Uh, we'll discuss after the uh, film. Uh, thank you. Okay, so we are going to see Fabricated and then we see this uh, five minute music video called Native Bapa, which we'll see why we're showing it after Fabricated. You'll see that and then we'll have a discussion with uh, KP Shashi and Geeta Seshu. Okay, so we come to the first uh, planned discussion of this festival and this whole session was called the state muzzling of freedoms and resistances and this is actually just part one because we have a whole part two tomorrow with uh, equally interesting uh, hard-hitting films and a discussion that's tomorrow morning. Uh, KP Shashi, director of Fabricated is here. Besides documentaries on diverse social issues and people's movements, he has made three feature films and two music videos. His books include When the Birds Stop Singing, a research study on the impact of chemical pesticides in India, and In Posters, a collection of cartoon posters used by activists. At present, he is associate editor at countercurrents.org. I've also asked Sashi Kumar to come up and join us a little earlier than was planned, because after this, we are screening his films after. Um, Sashi Kumar has a multimedia track record in print, television, film, and radio. He launched the AsiaNet satellite TV channel and statewide cable network in Kerala, and subsequently, subsequently founded and chairs the not-for-profit Public Trust Media Development Foundation, which runs the Asian College of Journalism. He lives in Chennai, and we'll be watching and discussing his film, Kaya Taran, also later this evening. Um, in conversation with KP Shashi and Sashi Kumar, uh, we'll probably move into, and I'd like you also to participate in this discussion because, you know, there are so many uh, sure. parallels between all these films that you're going to be seeing. 
Uh, we have Geeta Seshu, a senior journalist and currently consulting editor of the media watch site The Hoot. Since 2010, she has been coordinating the Free Speech Hub, a project to monitor freedom of expression in, in India. And there's much more that could be said about her, but I will, many of you know her, and I'll leave it to her to bring out in the discussion her experience with these uh, matters. So over to you. Thank you.